guys, I'm Rob and welcome to Axel's Garage. You know, having a code scanner for a vehicle made after 1996, an OBD2 scanner is a, a really a great tool to have because it points you in the right direction, it gives you live da data, you get those trouble codes, you Google them up and you get some great information on what's going on with your car, why you have a check engine light, why it's running rich, why it's running rough, and it gives you a wealth of information. But what happens if your car isn't OBD2? It was made prior to 1996. Well, for GM vehicles, it's an OBD1 computer. And what they do make, and back in 86, when we started Axel's Garage, we wound up buying one of these OBD1 scanners. It wasn't even called OBD1 back then, but it was a code scanner. And it was probably just as much as we paid for that, that OBD2 scanner recently. And it really didn't give you much information. It came with a book of, of codes and how to use it. And it, it says on it, Sun Pro, this is a Sun Pro, Pro brand code scanner. And the, the funny part on this, and I'll show it to you, is that it says GM vehicles 1982 and higher. So they thought that this was it forever when it was made. And that was 1982. That the, the 1982 to 1995 is what these... OBD-1 vehicles actually are, and this code scanner is pretty much a, a jumper, is all it is. It jumps two terminals together, and it cost a lot of money, and it came with a book because we didn't have Google in 1986, so we had to look up in this book what the code was, and it really never gave you a good indication of what was going on with the car, and we never really wound up using it. We knew we had a problem, we knew where the problem sort of was, but we it really didn't help us narrow it down. Well, fast forward a couple of decades, and now we have ODB2, um, ODB2, and and we got great code scanners. But what do you do when you got an old vehicle like this 1989 Blazer? Well, if you have one of these old code scanners, you can use it. If you don't, all you need to do is jump out two terminals in that connection block under your dash, and it'll give you the same results as this expensive scanner. Then when you get the code from the vehicle, you just go on Google and you Google it. And... You Google it and you get forums, you, you get you get tech articles, you get a ton of information that comes up that's going to point you in the right direction. And even if it's vague information, you can sort of narrow it down based on what the vehicle's doing, when the, the check engine light or the service engine light might be coming on. And that's what we're going to look at today is how to read an OBD1 code on a GM vehicle. This covers GM vehicles anywhere from 82 to 95, including the model year 95. And in 96 is when they went to ODB2 which you got to have a real code scanner for. So, this vehicle itself, uh, first time driven at highway speeds on the highway. My son was driving it last night. He said he was going about 55 miles an hour because he's a new driver, so double nickels on the highway, hopefully. But, he, you know, the speed limit's 55. He said he was doing about 55 or so, and the, the check engine light came on. Now, in these vehicles, they do have a service engine soon and a check engine light. So he said it was the check engine light that came on, um, when he got to his destination, he said the vehicle seemed to be running fine, he didn't notice anything. When he got to his destination, he turned it off, uh, went inside, did his thing, wherever he was doing for a couple of hours, came back out, turned it back on, and the light was off. Came home the same way, up at highway speed, the light remained off the rest of the time. Hopefully that code, like it should have been, was stored in the vehicle's computer, and we'll be able to pull that code out and see what the reason for that check engine light was. We know that it came on while he was cruising. Vehicle warmed up at highway speeds, so we know all that data because we know when it came on. Came on, and now we just want to pull that code out. So we'll show you how to do that. That's for an OBD1 GM vehicle. Covers years 82 to 95. Okay, inside the vehicle, right under the dash, just like in a newer OBD2 vehicle, you'll notice a diagnostic port, and up in the right-hand corner of the diagnostic port, you have you have two metal tabs inside that port. That's your A tab and your B tab. All you need to do is jump those two together. You could do it with a paper clip, you could do it with a jumper wire, or you could do it with an actual code scanner if you have one. So we're going to take our ODB1 scanner and we're going to plug it right into the diagnostic port, make sure it's seated all the way in. Like I said, if you don't have one, you just jump those in the upper right hand corner, the top two terminals, jump them out with a paper clip or a jumper wire. As long as the two of them are touching each other, that's all the computer needs to put it into diagnostic mode. So once you have your A port and your B port jumped out, whether it be with a jumper or with the tool, 
you put your key in and turn your ignition on, do not start the vehicle. Alright, when you do that, you'll see your service engine soon light. It's going to blink a one and then a two. One, one, two. And it's going to do that three times. And this will be the third cycle. One, one, two. And that's your third cycle. One, two, three. One, two, three. Oh, one, two. It's one, two, three. One, two. So I'm getting a 32. It's going to do it again. One, two, three. One, two. 32. Three times I got 32. One. And then one, two. Back to diagnostic mode. Okay, so every time you jump that out or plug the tool in and turn the ignition on, you're going to get a code 12. That code 12 is telling you that you're in diagnostic mode and it's confirming you're in diagnostic mode. So now code 12, that service engine soon light will flash once for the one and then one, two for the second one and it'll do it three times so that you make sure you catch it to three times and you count three times out. Once it does it to three times, if there's any stored codes in there, that's when it's going to start your stored codes. For us, it was a 32. So it flashed three times, and then one, two, and it did that three times. And then it went back to code 12. If there was a second code stored in there, it would have given that second code after the three times that it gave us the 32. It would have went to the second, third, fourth code, however many codes are stored in. When it goes back to one, and then a one, two, giving you a 12, you know you're done. And you could shut your ignition off, pull your tool out, or your jump wire, and you're all set. Now, you got to look up that code. And that's pretty easy to do. Um, we have the book. And the book will give you a little bit of information. It's a lot easier to do Google. But we'll check the book. All right, checking the book. Like I said earlier, it's really crappy information in this book. So a code 32 is bar barometric pressure, sensor circuit failure, or exhaust gas recirculation, parentheses, EGR valve, diagnostic switch, closed during engine startup, or open when EGR flow requested by ECM. Or EGR slash EVRV. What well, the heck what I'd mean? rather do is Google it and get some current information. Remember, this book was made back in the mid 80s or so, mid to late 80s, possibly. And I think they got a little better. Okay, so just grabbing my phone, going on Google, and typing in GM O. B D one. I keep saying it wrong. I keep saying O D B. O B D. Code one. Uh, o, o B D one. Code thirty two. And it comes up. And they're not even talking about the the barometric pressure thing. It's it's more about the E G R. And it looks like if you're pulling a code thirty two, it's an E G R problem. Now this vehicle is uh, doesn't qualify for emissions testing, so it's not an issue about getting it inspected. But it's something that I'd like to do a little research on to see if it drivability uh, gets affected, if fuel consumption gets affected, or if it really doesn't matter and we could just drive it the way it is. So a little more research. Uh, they, they, I noticed in a couple of articles that I briefly looked at that they mentioned that if you if you changed from a, a single exhaust system to a more free flowing um, dual exhaust that it could throw a, a code 32 code driving at highway speeds and that's what we do have in this vehicle and that's exactly what happened only at highway speeds it throws that code 32 just for a little while and it might not happen all the time so I'm going to do a little bit more research on Google I'm going to have my son continue to drive it he's going to let me know if it comes on and off when it does come on and off if it, it persists or it was just a freak thing the only thing to note about this particular code or, or the OBD, OBD or ODB? OBD. It's OBD. So the only thing to note about the OBD computers is you can't reset the codes like you can with an OBD2 computer, where you just go with your code scanner, you hit reset codes, and it clears your codes. In these vehicles, the only way to do it is to disconnect that battery and clear all your codes. So you leave the battery disconnected for 20 minutes to a half hour, and all your codes will be reset. So I hope this little bit of information helped you. It's a tool-free procedure to check the codes in GM vehicles from 82 to 95. You don't need that plug like I had. A paper clip will do, a jumper cable will do, as long as you connect those upper right-hand top two terminals. That's the A terminal and the B terminal. 
and you can pull your codes right from your dash by watching the flashing light. Go on Google, Google it up, make the repair, fix your car, and save a ton of money. That's it today from Axel's Garage. We'll see you next time.